Okay. So the topic for today is Pythagoras theorem. Okay. So every math topic has a purpose. What is Pythagoras theorem used for? Pythagoras theorem is used to calculate one side or the length of one side of a right angle triangle when the other two sides are given. So let's write that down. So Pythagoras theorem is used to calculate the length of one side of a right angle triangle when the other two sides are known. Okay? So what is Pythagoras theorem used for? Pythagoras theorem is used to calculate one side, the length of one side of a right angle triangle when the length of the other two sides are known. So remember, a, a triangle has three sides. But Pythagoras theorem is not used to calculate the length of any, any type of triangle. No, it is used to calculate the length of a right angle triangle. So not every type of triangle, because there are different types of triangle. But Pythagoras theorem is used to calculate the length of one side of a right angled triangle. Then the next question is, what is a right angle triangle? A right angle triangle is a triangle that has one of its angles equal to 90 degrees. So when a triangle has one of its angles, remember a triangle has three sides, one, two, three, and three angles, one, two, three. So a right angle triangle has one of its angles equal to 90 degrees. So this angle here is 90 degrees. So whenever you see a triangle that has an angle like this, this tells you that this angle is 90 degrees, and this also tells you that this triangle is a right angled triangle. So this is the only type of triangle that Pythagoras theorem is applied for. Okay? Not every type of triangle, but only this type of triangle. Okay? So if you have any triangle in this form, for example, if you have a triangle in this form, for example, Pythagoras theorem cannot be applied here because none of these angles is 90 degrees. So the only type of triangle that Pythagoras theorem can be applied in is a right angle triangle. Okay? So let's look at the parts of a right angle triangle. Okay? For us to apply Pythagoras theorem, we must know the parts of a right angle triangle. And the most important part of this right angle triangle is the side opposite the 90 degrees. So this is the 90 degrees, and this is the side opposite the 90 degrees. So when using Pythagoras theorem, this is the most important side, the side opposite the 90 degrees. And this is called the hypotenuse. So the side opposite the 90 degrees angle is called the hypotenuse. It's the most important side to be identified when you want to calculate using Pythagoras theorem. If you miss this side, you have failed the, the equation. Okay? So the hypotenuse is the side opposite the 90 degrees. So what formula did Pythagoras formulate in order to calculate one of the sides of a right angle triangle when the other two sides are known? So remember, this is hypotenuse. This angle, we can call it angle A. It doesn't matter. We can call it angle A. We can call this angle, this, sorry, side A and side B, okay? But the most important side to identify is the side opposite the 90 degrees, right? Okay, so what formula did Pythagoras generate to calculate the, to calculate one side of a right angle triangle? The formula is simply C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared. Very simple formula. C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared. 
Now, what is our C? Our C is equal to the hypotenuse. So this is why it is the most important side to be identified. The C in Pythagoras theorem is the hypotenuse. That means whenever you want to calculate using the Pythagoras theorem, the first thing you look out for is where is my 90 degrees? The second thing you look out for is where is my hypotenuse? Once you've gotten that, then you can decide to call here A. You can decide to call here A. So whatever side you call it, you can decide to call here B and call here A. But the most important thing is identify your hypotenuse. So the formula is C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared. This means that using this formula, if you know this side and this side, you can use this formula to calculate this side. If you know this side and this side, you can use this same formula to calculate this side. And if you know this side and this side, you can use the same formula to calculate this side. So let's go through what Pythagoras theorem is used for again before we start solving questions. Pythagoras theorem, this is used to calculate the length of one side of a right angle triangle. Are we using it for any type of triangle? No. For a right angle triangle when the other two sides are known. So for us to use it, one, it must be a right angle triangle, two, at least two sides must be known. So let's look at some questions that we can solve together. So I'm going to wipe, wipe off this, this uh, what I've written here. Example. So missing side in the triangle below. So we're expected to solve for the missing side in the triangle below. What's the triangle? Sorry. We have four centimeter, three centimeter, and x. Okay, so this particular question is a simple question. Remember, every math question is a simple question if you know what to do. If you know the right formula to apply, every math question is a simple question. So when we want to solve using Pythagoras theorem, the first thing we need to do is identify the 90 degree angle and identify the hypotenuse. So these are the two things we need to identify first before we continue. So let's do that together. So looking at this, we can see the sign that shows us that that's, this angle here is the 90 degree angle. Okay. So we've identified the 90 degrees angle. The next thing we should identify is the hypotenuse. Can anybody tell me the length of the hypotenuse from what we have here? Is the length of the hypotenuse 4? Is the length of the hypotenuse 3 or is it x? Correct, correct. x is the hypotenuse. Because x is the length of the side opposite the 90 degrees, so x is the hypotenuse. So that's the most important side to identify. The next thing we need to do is write down the formula we need to, have to solve the equation. So the formula is c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared. So that's the formula, very simple formula. Okay. The next thing we need to do is identify our C, which is the hypotenuse. So C is equal to x. We can also say let a be equal to 4. Remember, we are free to say let a be equal to 3. Okay. Once we have, we have, we have identified our C, that's the most important thing. So let's call a equal to 4 centimeters and B equal to 3 centimeters, okay? So with this, wherever I see my C, I'm going to put X. Wherever I see A, I'm going to put 4. And wherever I see B, I'm going to put 3. So let's do that. So instead of having C squared, I'm going to have X squared is equal to, instead of having A squared, I'm going to, instead of having A squared, I'm going to have 4 squared, so 4 squared. And instead of having B squared, I'm going to have 3 squared, so plus square okay so moving further 
4 squared is the same as 4 multiplied by 4, which is 16. So x squared is equal to 16 plus 3 squared is the same as 3 multiplied by 3, which is 9. So we have 9. So x squared is equal to 16 plus 9 is equal to 25. So x squared is equal to 25. But are we looking for x squared? No, we are not looking for x squared. We are looking for x. This means that square is on one third, right? We don't need square. So in order to eliminate square, we are going to introduce the opposite of square. In order to eliminate square, we are going to introduce the opposite of square. And the opposite of square is square root. Okay? So in order to cancel out square, we are going to find the square root of x squared. So this is going to be square root of x squared. But since we introduce square root to the left side, we are also going to introduce square root to the right side. So we have x squared. Okay. So square root is going to cancel out square. How do we know that? Let's see how that happens. If you have square root of 4 squared, 4 squared is the same thing as 16, because 4 squared is the same thing as 4 multiplied by 4, which is 16. So we have six, square root of 16. And what is square root of 16? Square root of 16 is 4. So you can see that square root of 4 squared, at the end of the day, we have 4 alone, and these two have cancelled each other out. So that is the same principle that applies here. Square root of x squared is simply x. It's equal to square root of 25 is equal to 5. So the length of the hypotenuse is equal to 5 centimeters. Very simple. Very simple. So let's solve another question. Example. Y, okay, X, 15 centimeter and 5 centimeter. So, this is a little different from the first two examples that we solved. So here, unlike the first two questions we solved, in the first two questions, we were not given the hypotenuse. So we are expected to find the hypotenuse. But in this particular question, we are given the hypotenuse on one other side. And we are expected to find the length of this side. So it gives a little twist to the question. So let's look at it together. So from what we've learned, what is the hypotenuse of this? What is the length of the hypotenuse of this triangle? 15, 15. So the length of the hypotenuse is 15 centimeters because it's the side opposite the 90 degrees. So the first thing we do is write the formula C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared. That's the first thing. Then let's identify all these sides. C squared or C is equal to 15 centimeters. A Let's call A X. A is equal to X centimeter. And B is equal to 5 centimeter. Okay? So we've done the first thing. We've taken the first step. We've identified the three sides of the triangle. Right? So the next thing we're going to do is, someone said the answer is 20. Did you add them? We're going to find out. We're going to find out. So the next thing we're going to do is, wherever I'll see C, we're going to put 15 centimeter, 15. Wherever I'll see A, we're going to put X. And wherever I'll see B, we're going to put 5. So this will be 15 square is equal to X square plus 5 square. So that's it. Because C is equal to 15, A is equal to X, and B is equal to 5. So 15 square is equal to X square plus 5 square. What is 15 squared? 15 squared is 15 multiplied by 15. 15 squared is 15 multiplied by 15. And that will give us 225. 
So we have 225 is equal to x squared plus 5 squared is the same thing as 25. Okay. Correct? 5 squared is the same thing as 25. The next thing we are going to do is we have we have 25 on the left on the right side, but we want to have x alone on one side of the equation. This means we are going to move plus 25 to the left side of the equation. And when plus 25 moves to the left, the plus sign is going to change to minus. So this is going to be 225 minus 25 is equal to x squared. 225 minus 25 is equal to x squared. So 225 minus 25 will give us 200. So we have 200 is equal to x squared. Okay? So that's it. Next, the next question is, we've not gotten x. We only have x squared is equal to 200. So to get x, we are going to divide, we are going to find the square root of both sides. So this is going to be square root of 200 is equal to square root of x squared. Okay. So we are trying to get the value of x. So square root and square will cancel each other out because they are opposite terms. Next, we are going to have square root of 200. Square root of 200. 10 root 2. Okay. But well, let's get it as a number. As a decimal number. 10 root 2, yeah. Yeah, correct. But we don't need it in, in that form. We don't need it in a sort form. 14.14, okay? So square root of 200 is equal to 14.14. So we can write it, 14.14 is equal to x, or we can simply say x is equal to 14.14. So x is equal to 14.14 centimeters. So that becomes the value of our x. Okay. So this means the length of this side of this triangle is equal to 14.14 centimeter. Someone said 50. No, it can't be 50. I'll just leave it on the board for a few minutes so you can look at how it is done. Last one. Okay, and then, so, okay, to join the WhatsApp group, all you need to do is go to my bio, my WhatsApp, my TikTok bio, you're going to see a link there. When you click on the link, you'll see some options, options like one-on-one -on -one tutoring, that's not, that's for those that want one-on-one -on -one tutoring. Then you see join WhatsApp group, you'll see an option to check my blog, and there are many options. So just choose the one to join my WhatsApp group. That's just it. But if it is, if you can't find the link, then you can send me a DM. Send me a DM tonight on on TikTok, then I will, I will send you my number. So you can just uh, connect, send me a direct uh, message on WhatsApp. Okay. So that will be all for today. So try out this question. Then when I post the video on YouTube, you can simply watch the video again and leave your answer to the value of X in the comment section. And that gives you an opportunity to be one of four persons that will win cash gift. Okay. So thank you everyone for your time. I wish you the best in not just your performance in mathematics, but your academic and career performance. I also, um, with time, I'm, I'm going to be giving students in my WhatsApp group opportunity to interact with me on career choices. Okay, I will be mentoring my students in my WhatsApp group on the right career choices, how to choose the right career. Many of us, while growing up, our parents, based on what the opportunities they had in their own time,
No, you don't solve and send to me. You don't solve and send the question to me. You solve the question. And then if you send it to me on WhatsApp, it doesn't really uh, attract any any uh, uh, gifts. It's when you do it on YouTube, when you put the option on, or the answer on YouTube, then you can get the opportunity. Because I'm going to go there and check those that got the correct answer and sieve them out. Okay. So as I was saying, many of our parents... They had some opportunities during their time when they were growing up. For example, many of them got jobs in factories, in as doctors, as lawyers, as engineers. So they felt that those same opportunities are available for people in this generation. Okay. So what they did is many of them forced us as children to a particular career that they felt would give us opportunities. But the opportunities of yesterday are not the opportunities of today. Example, I am a teacher, but there is an opportunity online to teach, right? So if you are teaching in the, the normal way, you might be missing out on opportunities that are available online, okay? So when uh, the students on my WhatsApp group, as time goes on, I will be giving them tips and uh, ideas on how to take, a, take advantage of the opportunities in our generation and not um, focus on trying to be like their parents or trying to do what their parents did because the opportunities of yesterday are gone. The opportunities of today are global. Okay, You can be anywhere in the world and take advantage of opportunities anywhere in the world if you are prepared okay so i'll see you in the next class you want to join the whatsapp group go to my bio click the link connect with me on whatsapp have a wonderful day have a wonderful day everyone see you in the next class see you in the next class bye